here I have a pile of salt. I've also got Sydney in the house, but Woolworths has started amazing concept stores. I want to know more about that, but I also want to know about salt intake today. Welcome to the show again. Thanks, Ilana. <laughs> I see two piles of salt. What are you trying to tell me? Well, this is what we should be eating a, in a year, which equates about a teaspoon of salt a day. Right. And this is what South Africans typically consume, about two, three times more than what's recommended. Wow. So wow. It's, it's rather excessive. How much salt should we take in? I mean, if you say a teaspoon a day. Mm. So explain it. How do we break it up into foods? I mean, when and where and how? Yeah. So the, the best way is to look at your food label, mm -hmm. and that will give you a per 100 gram of sodium per, per, per 100 gram of product. And then um, a product that's high in sodium would be about 600 milligrams, and a product that's low in sodium uh, is 120 milligrams. So then, if you're aiming for about a teaspoon a day, it's declared as 2,000 milligrams. Um, that would be 2,000 milligrams sodium a day. Um, so if you're having a tablespoon of soy sauce, for instance, this has over 1,000 milligrams per tablespoon. So you've definitely uh, just about uh, doubled your intake. I know we spoke about food labels the last time, but how will reading food labels help us with salt intake? So, what, do, what do we look out for? So what you'd look out for is not to exceed the 2,000 milligrams of sodium a day on a food label. So right. you can then um, sort of tally up um, if you're having a tablespoon of soy sauce, if you're putting a teaspoon of salt in your cooking, uh, if you're using some peanut butter, all of those would add up then and try not to exceed the 2,000 milligrams See, a day. See, all the stuff you're mentioning <laughs> is so good. I could just eat all of it. And I see why <laughs> our intake just becomes more and more. Is there any benefit in using different types of salt? I mean, I know that we have white salt here, but I know you get rock salt and all kinds of yeah. other salts. What are the benefits of using other types of salt? These, well, apart from flavor and visually being, looking quite um, impressive, you just need to be aware that the amount of sodium you're going to get is probably the same as you're going to get in regular salt. Mm. Um, and the, the reason why we're concentrating on salt is because of the link with uh, high blood pressure. About a third of South Africans actually have high blood pressure and, and the key driver of high blood sure. pressure is actually salt, salt intake. Yeah. Okay. So. What do we do with salt substitutes? Well, there are potassium uh, chloride substitutes, but it's not usually recommended for people with diabetes or kidney problems. So, um, best to consult with your doctor mm. if you're unsure. I guess it's better to just leave it out and then add to taste. I mean, yeah. most people that I know cook without salt. My mom does that, and you just add your own according to taste. Um, yeah. How do we get to eat less salt in our diets? I mean, l the way it looks right now is not appealing, but when it is in our food, it is more appealing. I mean, it's won't our food taste bland if we don't add salt? It's a very good point, but to, to your previous point about using other ingredients like the, the, what we have displayed here, those enhance the flavor of your dishes without depending solely on salt mm. to, to, to flavor that dish. So try to be creative, use spices and curry powders and all sorts of things like that to enhance the meal. Also, it takes a few weeks for your palate to get accustomed to less salt. So don't just cut it out and go cold turkey. <laughs> Gradually reduce and then you'll get used to it and enhance your flavors with other ingredients. I love how you call it cold turkey if you give your salt up. <laughs> has launched this magical hub. I call it that only because, you know, it's the first time that I've become health conscious about stuff because you're actually able to read and see labels. Mm. Just again, take me through it. So if I turn a product around and I'm looking for something, what precisely am I looking for? So if you look at this, uh, for example, you'll see the nutritional information table. Yeah. And it's declared per 100 ml and then per serving, which is about a tablespoon. Right. You'll see the sodium content is 6,960 right. milligrams. Right, so I'm looking at per... Per 100 ml. So if I were to more. drink uh, half of this bottle, <laughs> okay, which you hope which you, know. you won't. <laughs> so a more practical measurement would be per serving, which is a tablespoon, and that would give you still 1,000 milligrams okay. of sodium, which is is a high high sodium product. So um, remember, you're aiming for 2,000 milligrams a day. So if you're having a tablespoon, that's really half your intake okay. for the day. Cindy, you see, you bring all this valuable information. Can I have my products back? Because I'm going to use all uh, of this. In moderation. <laughs> <laughs> and I promise I'll be using it slowly. Okay, so the, the key is just to eat less salt yes. and make sure that you add to taste, I guess, and yeah, be careful when you use it. Okay, well, interesting. So Cindy's here with us, and she's telling us more about uh, uh, how to use salt in our food. But uh, for more information and also good choices, all you need to do is to go to woolworths.co.za forward slash healthy living. It's really... Um, knowledgeable and, and it encourages all to, to know uh, about what is in our foods and also what goes into it. Cindy, thanks again for joining us. Now, there's lots more happening after the break. In fact, we're cooking, I guess, with salt as well. We'll be back after the break.